Hello, my name is Jacob Avila of Core Ultrasound, and in this five-minute Sona video, I'm going to walk you through some MSK basics. Your probe of choice for most musculoskeletal applications is going to be the linear transducer. And whenever you're looking at musculoskeletal ultrasound, especially in the extremities, you're basically going to see these structures. You're going to see your subcutaneous tissue as the most superficial layer. You're going to see a hyperechoic fascial plane deep to that. You'll see muscles. And then in between those muscles, you'll see fascia and then more muscle. And then deep to that, a bone. Let's look at a knee next. We actually have a bunch of structures here to look at. I'm excited to scan knees. I love knees. So right here we have the patella with the dropout of signal. And then we have the patellar tendon, a very organized structure that connects the patella to this structure right here, which is the tibia. Now right here we actually have a little bit of a bursa as well. Now one thing that's very interesting about tendons and ligaments and to a lesser extent muscles and nerves is that they can exhibit this thing called anisotropy. So what this is, is when you have structures like tendons, like ligaments, like muscles, like nerves that are organized linearly, when the ultrasound beam comes down and hits these fibers at 90 degrees, you get a very bright signal back. But if you're not at 90 degrees here, some of it might bounce back, but a lot of it actually goes away. It goes this way. It doesn't reflect back. So it actually will create a dropout of signal. Well, not really a dropout, but you just won't get a great signal back. And this is opposed to something called isotropy, which is basically doesn't matter where you look at this thing. It's going to be homogenous anywhere. And this does not get darker if you change your angle of your transducer. But this is something that definitely happens a lot with musculoskeletal ultrasound. This right here is the uh, flexor carpi ulnaris tendon. This right here is the ulnar nerve. And what I'm going to do here is I have the transducer on the anterior forearm in the transverse orientation. And as I fan the transducer, look at that tendon. It completely disappears because this is anisotropy. This is what happens with these structures. So just be aware of it. Cartilage is another structure that you can see. Typically, it's at the end of bones if it's going to be there. This is a knee that is flexed at 30 degrees, then goes to about 90 degrees flexion. The cartilage is going to be hypoechoic. You'll be able to see right through it to get to the cortex of that bone, and this will be not compressible if you push it with a transducer. Joints are also a thing that you'll see. This is a sternomanubrial joint. This is the manubrium, and this right here is the sternum itself. And this could look like a fracture, but if you draw a horizontal line between the two, just connecting these two things, it's pretty even. There's no step-offs. Additionally, when you're scanning, you know where you're placing the transducer, and you know that you're at a joint. So that's probably the biggest hint. But this is what joint looks like. There's a little bit of a joint kind of sack right there that sometimes can get inflamed. And then you can go inferiorly or down towards the feet and see the rest of that sternum. This right here is a quick example of an examination of the suprapatellar area. We have quite a few structures here, actually. We have the quadriceps tendon. That's this nice linear thing here attaching to the patella. We have a couple of fat pads. We have the quadriceps fat pad. We have the prefemoral fat pad. And around joints, there's usually fat pads. And by around joints, I mean inside joints. And then around joints, you have these things called bursa. This right here is a suprapatellar bursa. Now let's bring it all together to know what to do with this information by looking at pathology. This right here is my all time favorite tendon. This is the Achilles tendon. It's the biggest tendon in the body. This is a calcaneus here. I actually have the probe marker facing down instead of up for some reason. So sorry about that, but this is down, this is up, or this is caudal and this is cephalad. And you can see here that this tendon is quite organized, right? There's no breaks in it. It's nice, even thickness. It tapers off as you go up the leg. This right here is quite a big Achilles tendon rupture. So right here you have a piece of it. So this right there is a piece of the Achilles tendon. And then right here is the other piece of the Achilles tendon with a big tear, a complete tear right here. This is actually blood. I'm slightly dorsiflexing the foot to get this effect to just make sure that what I'm seeing is a complete rupture or not. This right here is the sternomanubrial joint here. We talked about this earlier, but then look over here. This is a fracture. So we have a good step off here. This is actually a sternal fracture. That's it for this five minute sono. If you have any questions or comments, send me an email or a tweet. I hope to hear from you soon and happy scanning.